and welcome to the 20th episode of Art Snaps. My name's Katie and I've been putting together these weekly talks about Swindon's art collection since about April this year, which is 2020, just in case you're listening to this well into the future. And I started them because Swindon Museum and Art Gallery had to close its doors earlier on this year, of course, because of COVID-19. And I wanted to find a way to keep the conversations going around the art collection whilst the public has been unable to enter the museum. Back then, I actually only planned to make 10 episodes, but I've just kept on going, and here we are, 19 episodes down. So if you've been listening regularly, I hope you're still enjoying listening to these as much as I'm enjoying making them. And if you're new to Art Snaps, then a big warm welcome to you, and what a good time to join the party because you're about to hear about some of my favourite drawings in Swindon's collection of modern and contemporary British art. I've spoken about a number of drawings in previous art snaps, but I haven't really focused on drawing in a purposeful way or thought about it as an art practice or an art medium specifically. So I've chosen drawings by George Clausen, R.B. Kittai and Sarah Purvey to talk about today. And as always, I'll go in chronological order. So we'll begin with George Clausen's, or Sir George Clausen, I should say, Sir George Clausen's The Reapers from 1896, which is one of the earliest pieces in the collection. And this is actually one of four sketches by Clausen in the collection, but I chose to speak about this one because I think it's the one that best demonstrates the kind of work Clausen's known for, which tends to present images of agricultural labour against an atmospheric rural backdrop. In this case, there's a beautifully captured tonal contrast between light and dark, from the silhouetted figure of the worker in the background to the light bouncing off the white shirts of the other two figures. And I also really like the way he seems to have used some kind of eraser to carve out the sun in the sky and also depict the wheat catching the light in the foreground. It shows a fantastic observation of the light in the landscape. And we know that Clausen was influenced by the French Impressionist painters, whose very bread and butter was capturing those ephemeral effects of light in nature. But unlike the Impressionists, it wasn't just the landscape that caught Clausen's attention, but also the realities of hard country labour. And I think that he's really captured this in the variety of movements of the three figures. The men in the foreground and background are kind of lunging forward with a scythe in one hand. And the man in the midground is bending low to scoop up the crops. We don't see any of their faces because it's not really about them as individuals. It's more about the work and that physical bending, lunging and swinging and these repetitive actions throughout a long, laborious day, which is implied by the sun being low in the sky, indicating either the sun rising or the sun setting. I'm not entirely sure which, but it certainly doesn't seem like these men are working nine till five. Despite how accomplished this drawing is, it was actually intended as a preparatory sketch for a painting meaning that Clausen was probably using this as an opportunity to experiment with things like light and composition, or perhaps to practice his figure studies. And I'm not entirely sure what the final piece was, but Clausen made paintings of reapers before and after this was drawn. And these are also full of great atmosphere and variety of movement. Now we're going to look at this phenomenal drawing by Ronald Brooks Kitai, better known as R.B. Kitai. Although I'm going to admit right off the bat that I really don't have much information about this piece. I just really wanted to talk about it because it's such a beautiful example of drawing from the collection. I assume CBD in the title refers to the model, who as we can see is heavily pregnant, although I don't know who she is. But the casual way that it's written on the front of the drawing could imply that she's someone Kitai knew well or intimately. What we do know is that Kitai was a member of a group of well-known artists which he himself termed the School of London. And this was because he wanted to draw attention to artists working in London who were finding new and interesting ways to paint the human figure. And this was at a time when very new and edgy abstract art movements like minimalism and conceptualism were fashionable. 
So Kitai was very interested in depicting the human figure and the human experience in his work, and therefore the nude appears quite frequently. After a quick Google search, I did find a few other drawings of nude pregnant women, but none which gave me an indication of who this woman is, and no others which showed them reclining on a chaise lounge, designed by the Swiss architect Le Corbusier. And this is something we do know about the piece, and it gives the work a really interesting dynamic composition because the shape of the body follows the shape of the furniture. We also know, as the title suggests, that there's a drawing by Kitai's fellow artist Frank Auerbach in the background. If you're a regular listener and you're trying to work out where you've heard that name before, we spoke about a series of etching in Swindon's collection by Auerbach back in episode 14. And Albach was another member of the School of London, and his work is characterised by rich and expressive brushwork or mark making. So here Kitai has shown this through expressive strokes of charcoal in the background above the model. So it's kind of a drawing within a drawing, which I think is a really interesting and fun aspect of this particular piece. But another thing I don't know is why this drawing was made. I don't know whether it was intended as a preparatory sketch for a painting or whether it's an artwork in its own right. And again, when I was doing my research on Kitai, I didn't find a corresponding painting or another kind of corresponding drawing to this piece. But certainly by the 20th century, drawing no longer needs to be a study, but has become an autonomous art form. And one thing's for sure, it definitely works as a standalone piece because it's so confidently executed. Its bold charcoal outlines really demonstrate Kitai's talent for draftsmanship. And certain parts of the drawing that are particularly special include the hand clutching the side of the chair and the rhythmic flow of circles which draw the eye from the cushion she leans her head on to the heavily pregnant belly and perhaps more subtly to the very lightly drawn knee bone. And it all kind of follows this curvature of this incredible chair that she's laying on. So I don't think it matters whether this was intended as a study for another work or not, because the confident and almost effortless way that he's used the charcoal to both expressive and graphic ends makes this a really powerful piece of drawing. Our final piece for today is Sarah Purvey's Untitled Drawing from 2014. So this is one of the more recent acquisitions to enter the collection. And what's really great about this piece is its incredible energy through all that dynamic abstract mark making. And we can see that the piece is built up from layers of lyrical and almost hypnotic circles of ink and confident lines of chalk and pencil, which force the eye up and down and round and round the paper. And it shows that drawing doesn't have to represent something, but can rather express something more internal or instinctual. I should also mention that the collection here in Swindon also owns one of Purvey's gorgeous hand-built ceramic vessels, which has these incredible rhythmic charcoal coloured marks. And I think that instantly you can see a dialogue between the vessel and the drawing. And I was lucky enough to catch up with the artist during research for this episode, which is the nice thing about talking about contemporary art is that we can actually talk to the artist about what their intentions are and what their processes are. And Sarah told me that regardless of whether the mark is being made on paper or on clay, it's all about being a physical and emotional trace. And that she can't be too precious about making marks on the clay, despite the fact that it's a more time consuming medium to work with, because that would ruin the integrity of the work. The marks need to come from an immediate and instinctive place. And Sarah also told me that the year this piece was created was an important year in terms of her drawing practice. And this was partly because her studio flooded, which meant she had to temporarily move to a new one, which happened to be about three or four times as large as her other studio. So this gave her drawing practice room to flourish. And she recounted to me that she had so many surfaces to work on and drawings were pinned up all over the walls and her energy levels in this space were so high and her mark making became stronger and more urgent, both in her work with clay and her work on paper. And Swindon's drawing was made during this intense period of working, so it reflects the first few months of settling into this new space. 
And when looking at Sarah Purvey's work, we can really see how contemporary artists are opening up new possibilities for drawing as a practice. It's responsive, it's expressive, and it's gestural. And it doesn't need to be a study for another work, and it doesn't need to be representational. And most innovative of all in Purvey's case is that it doesn't even need to be on a two-dimensional surface anymore. Before I round up this one for today, I do want to mention that a Q&A with myself and Sarah Purvey is about to be published on the Art on Tour blog. So that's a great opportunity to find out more about her work and her relationship with Swindon Museum and Art Gallery. I've included the link to the blog on the slide here, and that's where we publish all of our news and all of our articles about Swindon's art collection. That's all from me, so thanks for listening, stay safe and well, and bye for now.